peace be with you. Through my interaction with people on social media, I have come to believe that a lot of people still do not understand what the words Islam and Muslim mean. In their purest form, both of these words imply obedience to God. Islam means submission to God, and Muslim is a person who submits their will to God, who does what God commanded. God demands obedience. God sent down laws, not religions, not organizations, but laws. So when God says you cannot lie, cheat, steal, fornicate, that you have to be good to your parents, that you have to be humble, that you have to treat your neighbors well, that you have to do all of these out of your sincere dedication to God, that is Islam. This isn't something that you're born into this, it is something that you choose. You can't just leave Islam. When, they, when people tell me that they're going to leave Islam if they don't get it their way, I'm like, okay, so what are you going to try to do? What are you going to start doing? Are you going to start lying? Are you going to start fornicating? Are you going to start disrespecting your parents? Are you going to start killing people? What are you actually leaving? This isn't an organization. God did not send down an organization. God sent down principles. Or when you say that you are non-practicing Muslim, what does that even mean? So you literally say, I am a person that does not obey, but I claim to obey. I am a submitter to God. That's what the word Muslim means. So when you say, I don't practice, that means, oh yeah, I lie and I cheat and I steal, but I still belong to the organization because you view Islam as an organization, but it's not an organization. It is a set of principles. When God talks about Islam in the Quran and Muslims in the Quran, God doesn't even talk about people who are associated with the Quran. That's how you know that's not what the word means. The word Muslim doesn't mean uh, that you are purely associated with the Quran. Now it does because that is the, the law. That is the law that was re-revealed because there are so many corruptions that God accumulated through time. So God said, I'm going to clarify the law for you. If you read the Quran, you will see that all the people that preceded Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, were referred to as Muslims. For example, in the third chapter of the Quran, verse 52, the followers of Prophet Jesus, peace be upon him, were called Muslims. And it says, but when Jesus perceived unbelief on their part, he said, who will be my helpers in God's way? The, the, the disciples said, we are the helpers of God. We believe in God and bear witness that we are Muslimin. So they said, we are, we bear witness that we are obedient to God. We are Muslimin, right? Nothing to do with the Quran. These people never met Prophet Muhammad. They never read the Quran. Or for example, uh, in the third chapter of the Quran, verse 67, we are told that Abraham, or Ibrahim, peace be upon him, is referred to as a Muslim. It says, Abraham was not a Jew or a Christian, but he was upright, Muslim, meaning submitting to God. So this verse literally talks about organizations we call religions, and it's talking about behaviors, and he was not one of the polytheists. Even Abraham and Jacob told their children not to die unless they are Muslims. Again, these people never read the Quran, they never uh, met Prophet Muhammad, but what they had is God's law. That's what it means. God's law. You do what God commanded. That's what these words mean. And it says in the second chapter of the Quran, verse 131 and 132, when his Lord said to him, Submit, Eslam, he said, I submit myself to the Lord of the worlds. And the same did Abraham command to his sons, and so did Jacob. O oh, my sons, surely God has chosen for you this faith, therefore do not die unless you are Muslims, meaning in submission to God, meaning doing what God tells you to do. There is no such thing as a non-practicing Muslim. It does not work like that. In your mind, it might work like that because you perceive Islam as an organization, as a gathering of people who may all profess to think alike, but don't act alike, but that's not what it means. Or Prophet Joseph, peace be upon him, in the 12th chapter of the Quran, verse 101, he prayed to die as a Muslim. Again, never met Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said, My Lord, you have given me of the kingdom and taught me of the interpretations of sayings, originator of the heavens and the earth. You are my guardian in this world and the hereafter. Make me die in submission, Muslim, and join me with the good. People of Lot were referred to as Muslims. In the 51st chapter of Quran, verse 36, we are told, but we did not find therein except one house of Muslims. None of these people met Prophet Muhammad. So when we read in the Quran, for example, in the third chapter of the Quran, verse 19, Surely 
the deen, the way or the faith or the religion with God is Islam, what we need to read is surely the deen with God is submission, it's obedience to God. There is no such thing as non-practicing Muslim and the only way to leave Islam is to start violating the tenets as a matter of your life, not as a mistake, but as a pattern of your life, you start violating them willingly and not caring about it, and that is how you leave Islam. This is what this means. So when you have people talking about Islam like it's an organization, or how they are Muslims but not practicing, or how, you know, it's, it's very, very sad to hear that kind of speech because it shows how little they understand of what God says in the Quran look in Surah Saf in the 61st chapter of the Quran in the 2nd and 3rd chapter God says O you who believe why do you say that which you do not do most hateful to God is that you should say that which you do not do God hates this so if you say I am a Muslim what you are in essence saying I submit to God what I am doing is what God told me to do. And then if you don't do that, you are a liar. And not only are you are, are, are a liar, but you are the worst of liars because you are projecting now your behavior on other people who are actual Muslims, and now they have to suffer your crimes because they are being placed in the same category as you and your crimes by people who don't know any better, and they have to suffer because of you. And this is why God hates the hypocrites the most. God says in the Quran, for the hypocrites is the lowest place of the fire, even lower than uh, disbelievers and, and polytheists and idolaters. And this is what the Quran says, and this is what this is all about. It's a lifestyle, it's a way of life, it's not an organization, and the only way you can have Islam is if everybody does their best to actually be what they say they are. That's the only way God is going to like you, because like I said, God hates that we say that which we do not do. This is Islam. This kind of came off a little angry, and I didn't mean to, but I just want people to understand. Peace be with you.